Well, one of the first things to do is to work out what you actually want to change and where you are. So, I mean, I'm, I'm specialised in physical activity, right? So I'll go, I'll talk to that, I guess. Because I look at other health behaviours, but I think I'm going to stick to what I, I really know, which sure. is, is exercise and physical activity. So one of the first things is that to, to monitor what you're doing. So I love to give people, do you know the recommendations for physical activity? How much you should be doing a week? Uh, well, I mean, what I've heard is it's 30, 30 minutes a day. Yeah, so 150 minutes a week. Right. And I think there's this... Can you can we just pause? I'm not going to try and interrupt yeah, you all yeah. the time, but describe physical activity. Physical activity... Because 30 minutes a day, what does that mean? It's well, Physical activity is any activity that's in, going to increase your energy expenditure. So, well, even, I, I'm, I'm using an app to track my fitness at the moment. I entered mowing the lawns the other day yep. and I was like, five, I put it in because it, it was quite long. It took me an hour. I put it in an hour and I was staggered at the amount of calories it said I burned. I burned like 500 calories just mowing the lawns. So was it, would it be easy to say that what raises your normal heart rate? Is there a way to, to tangibly measure that? Yeah, so heart rate, uh, there's certain descriptions to it. So you got like, you get moderate. This is all moderate physical activity. Yep. You can do vigorous, uh, which, you know, I'm playing football soon and that's that's going to be vigorous activity. So you got to do 75 minutes of vigorous or 150 minutes of moderate. Moderate is anything where your sort of heart rate's going up. You might start to sweat, but you're not sweating buckets. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's something like brisk walking, for example, is moderate. A really good thing, one of, one of my um, previous clients... She used to be in a circus. Oh, wow. And she uh, was a juggler. And there's a Harvard University have got this great compendium of all these physical activities that you can do. And they rate things in terms of, um, I don't want to go into too much detail, but by moderate and vigorous, essentially. How many met minutes, which is uh, how, many min- how many metabolic units you're burning per. So if we're sitting down here now, it's one, mm. like it's at rest. If we stand up and start walking, we might be burning twice as many calories. Mm-hmm. So that's two. If we start running real quick, you might be burning eight as many, eight times as many calories. That's eight. So that's eight mets. Basically, um, moderate is like sp- around six mets. It turns out that juggling is a moderate physical activity. <laughs> oh, cool. So you could do 150 minutes of juggling. I can juggle. And just stand, as long as you're standing up juggling, like you're getting your core workout and it's actually, you know, I, I've i never. Wow. I'm, yeah, yeah. I so, like juggling. Then go for it, man. I reckon juggle. So that's one of the things I love to do. Uh, you talk about physical activity. Is actually give the first thing I do is give people a challenge, uh, 150 minutes in the first week, uh, of finding a moderate physical activity they can do, and just fill up that 150 minutes with something they really enjoy. Because if they can tap into something that they enjoy doing, then that's pretty much the job done. You know, if you can get someone to enjoy doing 150 meter juggling, then, then go for it. I think that's, I think that's one of my big problems at the moment because I, in my younger days, when I was a young one, um, basketball. Yeah. I played basketball two, three, four hours a day mm. and actually doing exercise or something you enjoy is the best way to do it. Whereas my knees are now shot. My back's pretty bad. Yeah. You know, it feels like I can't do those things that I once did for fun so it has to be sort of just something for exercise. And I think that's something you kind of, a lot of people kind of go, oh. Like my sister, for example, um, she goes to the gym, but she loves it. She's got a community there. She's got friends there. And it really helps her serotonin levels go through yeah. the roof sort of thing. Um, I am a, you know, I like lifting heavy weights. That's what I've always done. But now because of my broken body, I can't lift heavy weights. Mm. So it's like I now need to, I don't know what that thing is, that fun thing for me. I like. I don't know what that fun thing is. So I'm now thinking. Oh, I mowed the lawns for an hour. I almost think the opposite of what you're saying, which probably isn't smart. Which is, I'd rather find things I have to do and be able to tick it off, than find things I want to do to be able to not notice it. Yeah, and uh, like I said, the the enjoyment is obviously that's the ideal scenario, right? That's the sort of gold standard of motivation if you can find something you enjoy. I need an e-bike. Yeah, yeah, get an e-bike. Yeah, yeah. right into down. That was one of the themes that came up all the time was that he's bringing joy back to people's lives. You know, there's, like I said, this 80-year-old woman who's flying down North Road, absolutely buzzing because she's on an e-bike. And yeah, anyway, that's that's another thing. So yeah, that's that's the ideal. I think there's, I, I, like, I like to get people curious about their movement again because I think there's been this sort of, this huge dissociation. We evolved to move, right? Like there's a natural reward system in movement that now we get, sort of conditioned from like four years old to sit down and, and concentrate at school. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just, this this curiosity around movement just gets beaten, not physically, out of us. 
And I think um, that's what I try and do is get people back to being curious about movement. What does it feel like? And like, ask them to take notes on their thoughts leading up to movement and what happened during movement. What did you enjoy about it? And how do you feel afterwards? So I think that's really important. It's that mindfulness aspect mm. as well. Um, you know, try and think about it and, and be curious about movement again. But like I said, it's not always that possible to find these activities that you do enjoy. So again, talking about the core values, um, one of the first things I do is I've got a big list of potential values that you could have and get them to choose five of those. So there's, I mean, I'm trying to think of different examples on there now. There's things like compassion's one, family, community, all these sort of, you know, hundreds of values that you could choose from. Mm -hmm. Get them to choose five of those that really speak to them, you know, as individuals, because it's amazing how the, the variety. You think that lots of people have shared values, but the amount of variety that you have, that, that people have in their own value systems is just amazing. And create that, create a sort of mission statement. So you put verbs in front of them. So act with compassion, uh, find community, those sorts of things. And then try and connect that. What we do is work to connect. It is a counseling session, essentially. It's physical mm -hmm. activity counseling. So you're working to connect um, these values to, to the reasons for being physically active. And I think that's a really important thing because as soon as you make those connections with values, it seems like you're working, you, every time you've been physically active, you're working towards something that's bigger than you. 